reading for today is Isaiah 6, 1 to 3. In the year that Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the town. Above him stood the seraph. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and having in his hand a burning coal, that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this, is, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The intro is spoken responsibly the congregation of old friends.
not abandoned to Hades, nor did the flesh seek corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and that you and that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and we received from the Father the promise of his Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend to the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies my footstool. But all the house of Israel know that all the house of Israel before before know the certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus you have first found. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Trinity Sunday, we discuss the Athanasian Creed as found on page 319. It's a lengthy creed. We may sit for this. We read the creed responsibly by the whole verse. Born from the substance of his mother in this age. Glory to God and glory to God. 
Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. According to me. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Forever, oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. 
Isaiah 48, verses 12 to 18. We may sit. I hope that you have found the lavender sheet that has the outline of today's message. There are blanks to fill in. And the words of our text are printed at the top. I call your attention to Isaiah 48, verses 12 to 18. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, whom I call. I am he, I am the first, and I am the last. My hand laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand forth forever. Assemble all of you and listen. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He shall perform his purpose on Babylon, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken and called him. I have brought him, and he will prosper in his way. Draw near to me. Hear this. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. From the time it came to be, I have been there. And now the Lord God has sent me and his Spirit. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. This is our text. A child rode with her mother to a January birthday party. She was excited but thought it would be embarrassing to be the first one to arrive. As they came up the street, the girl was fretting about this when her mother responded, Don't worry, because I believe you will be the third to arrive. How do you know, Mom? Well, I see an unfamiliar car in the driveway that is probably the first guest. And I see a pair of footprints that go up to the front door and don't return. So that is a second guest. So you will make the third to arrive. The girl had to admit that her mother was pretty clever, or we might say, observant. I have felt the same way about the church fathers. Those who developed the doctrine of the Trinity, which we celebrate today. Like that worried girl, I could not see the situation clearly, especially when I read the Old Testament. Where is the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in these 39 books of Revelation to God's people? And then someone like Augustine or Justin Martyr or St. Gregory of Nyssa or St. Jerome points out where the three persons are evidenced in the Old Testament and why those defenders of the truth of God formulated the identity of God as three persons, yet one God. Isaiah 48, verse 16 states, Draw near to me, hear this. From the beginning I have not spoken in secret. From the time it came to be, I have been there. And now the Lord God has sent me, and his spirit. Do you see the three persons of God disclosed here? The Lord God has sent refers to the person of the Father who sent his Son to be our Redeemer. From the time it came to be, I have been there, and now the Lord God has sent me. Who was there from the beginning? The Son who is being sent. And who else is being sent? And his Spirit. Although Christians have observed this ever since, and it is taught to juniors in catechism for a generation of Christian believers, the church fathers, notably the apostles themselves, and the two or three generations of Christians after them, have read the scriptures closely and realized that the works of God are presented as works of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
today's text, Isaiah is addressing the people of his own time who had seen their countrymen in the north destroyed by the Assyrians and who themselves survived a harrowing siege by those Assyrians. Furthermore, they had been told that the succeeding empire, that of Babylon, would destroy them and carry them off into exile to a people whose world was falling apart. God spoke through Isaiah to give them perspective. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel whom I call. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. My hand laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand forth together. God is still in charge. You are still called by God's name. Note the words, I am the first and I am the last. These are words used by Christ in the revelation to St. John in the last book of the Bible to those suffering persecution and fearing for their lives. The risen Christ declares that he is first and last, Alpha and Omega. And that truth stands still today as a message of comfort to those of us whose world be seemingly be coming apart. Even though it may seem to be chaotic, God is still in charge. He who made the heavens is in control still, and you are called by his name. Amen. Isaiah continues in the 14th verse, Assemble all of you and listen. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He shall perform his purpose on Babylon, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken and called him. I have brought him, and he will prosper in his way. God's people are called upon to assemble. The word for church in the New Testament is ecclesia, those who are called out and called together, called out of the world which is perishing, and called together to worship God. And we worship when we listen to what he says. Our assembly today brings the church together and reminds us of who we really are. There was an activity done in kindergarten in anticipation of Father's Day where a child was shown pictures of adults in various activities and the child was to say which picture represented his or her father. One little girl saw a picture of a man washing clothes. My daddy does that sometimes, but that's not my daddy. Then there was a picture showing a man taking a bath. My daddy does that sometimes, but that's not my daddy. Then one of a man reading the newspaper. My daddy does that sometimes, but that's not my daddy. Finally, there was a picture of a man holding his child up in the air. That's my daddy, the girl responded. He does that every time I see him. You and I engage in many activities throughout our lives, and God is a part of each of those activities. But worship is what we share in church, where God is present in his word and sacrament. And this is what shows that he is our God and that we are his people. We know when we attend worship that God has spoken to us, God has called us, and God will prosper us, as Isaiah wrote in our text. And then comes the key verse for today. Draw near to me, hear this. From the beginning I have not spoken in secret. From the time it came to be, I have been there. And now the Lord has sent me and his spirit. God says to the prophet that his plan has not changed, that he had determined beforehand. As the risen Lord Jesus had pointed out to his disciples, everything written about me in the law, the prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. He told them that his coming to be among them, to suffer on the cross for them, and to rise from the dead for them, was part of God's plan from the beginning. Perhaps Christ could have quoted these words from our text, and now the Lord God has sent me and his spirit. For the risen Christ told them to remain another ten days in Jerusalem until the spirit, another paraclete, or counselor, or helper, or comforter, depending on how you want to translate the word paraclete, but another one 
emotions of the heart which could well turn out to be indigestion, but by the word, the message of the prophets. In fact, we confess in the creeds that God the Holy Spirit spoke by the prophets. So if we desire peace from God, if we wish to profit from God's message, we rely on the Spirit's work. He who opens our hearts to believe and trust in our Redeemer and to receive His righteousness. Now some of you may be feeling like that young camper who could, who could not see the forest because too many trees were in the way. And that's okay. No one sees through the mysteries of God, though some can fathom a little deeper than others. God does not require a scholar's understanding of theology to be saved. But he does require trust. You don't have to know how your car works, but you have to trust that it will start when you turn the key and get you to where you need to go. God, the Holy Trinity, will take you where you need to go. To himself in heaven. But we must make use of the gifts he provides to trust and obey his word during our journey. And it is clear from Isaiah's message that we journey not alone, but in company with fellow believers in the church, with saints and angels who have completed the journey and cheer us on, and with the Spirit's guidance who makes Jesus Christ present in our hearts and our lives. May you be blessed in the journey as you walk with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the most holy trinity ever blessed. Amen. 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 And may that peace of God that surpasses understanding keep your hearts and minds in this true teaching to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. It is appropriate that we respond to this word of God with the Te Deum Laudamus, the hymn of Canticle, the uh, rather Canticle of Mammoths on page Thank you.
people may remain steadfast in the true faith, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and in the Christ, who is God and man for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray for the mission of the church, that many more may hear the word of God and come to faith. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, that you have made us part of your outreach to others. Help us to seize the opportunity to share our faith, the hope that we have with others. Lord, we also pray for mission agencies like our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, for the Lutheran Heritage Foundation, for our own radio ministry, Martin Luther's Evening Prayer, that you would deign to use these to bring the Word of God to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our nation and our leaders, that they may be God's servants for our good. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, that you have given us government accountable to the people. Therefore, make us good stewards of this, our government, that we may use our institutions, flawed as they are, for service to the common good. Bless especially those in positions of responsibility, especially our president, our governor, our judges, magistrates, and all public servants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve our nation in the armed forces. On this weekend, Lord, we give you a special thanks for those who pay the full price to protect our liberties and our properties. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless those who currently serve in our nation's military that you would deliver them from sin, enable them to use the power of the sword only on behalf of justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the troubled in heart or mind who are in need of our prayers. Hear us, Lord, for Chris, Paul, William, Ray, Denise, Gail, Melissa, Crystal, Emma, Sarah, Blaine, Mary, and others, Lord, who have particular needs, for others also that we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and the shut in, and those who care for them. Lord, we thank you for medical personnel. 